Okay, so GoEve is a company that's a spin out of two universities, Imperial College in London and University College here in Dublin. And it's aiming to technologize a com or to commercialize a technology called Dockchain. It was originally invented in UCD. And the 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 technology basically was invented to address a problem I think that EV owners are very familiar with is queuing for charge points. And it was actually originally invented to address the problem in households. If you had a multi EV household and you had one AC charger out on the front wall and you know mom had a car and dad had a car and one of the kids had a car you know you have the car plugged in and a dinner time discussion is all about well you'll have to go out later and swap the car around to get to the charge point and this is going to be a pain in the neck uh, for households and when UCD came to me to I've been working on some EV stuff for a while for the UK market to have a look at this technology we thought there was a huge potential not just for uh, domestic charging but for fleet locations and fleet charging as well and in terms of the pandemic, one of the things that's been very interesting and other people have talked about it is, you know, huge upswing in the number of, of cars that are being bought. I think Norway might have no new liquid fuel cars being sold after this year. It's quite possible. And this drives us into that corner again where uh, EV charging is the, is, the, is the problem. And with the dock chain, what we're trying to do is imagine a world where you don't have to worry about which parking space has charging because they all do. Now, that might be a bit ambitious. But we're certainly trying to get uh, towards that direction. I think I've heard a lot of people expressing that that's a problem. Now, this is a slide we're using in presenting to other people. I think most of the people know about that from here. And on this uh, this discussion is generally what you have with AC with with charging is AC, which is nice and cheap, but it's slow. Or you can have DC, which is fast but expensive. And what the dock chain system does in many ways, it's a kind of a Goldilocks solution, which it's ten times cheaper than DC per space and it's 10 times faster than AC in any given space. And um, that's what it enables you to do. It's a, it's a, it's a clever solution out. Now, EV charging in many ways is, or at least how DockChain works is, is conceptually a, an extension cable system. And it's, and it's an extensible system. So you can add another one onto the end of the chain and you can turn one uh, charged space into five or 10 or 20 charged spaces, but you can't do it in a simple way because in EV charging there's a lot of signaling between the car and the charger before a charging session actually gets set up. So one of the things that our system does is it is it it tells the car that it's the charger and it tells the charger that it's the car and so that it can kind of control the queue of cars that are waiting for a charging session and when the charging session is actually happening we let it flip back to the car talking to the charger and they negotiate their own charging session themselves. Uh, Bob Shorten, who uh, was the academic originally involved in, in coming up with the technology, calls it the Boris box. It lies to everybody all the time. Um, but the way that, that the kind of charge point multiplication effect works is if you imagine a normal fairly high power DC charger, these prices have actually gone up over the last several months. A normal DC charger costs you 50 to 80K. That doesn't include groundworks and it doesn't include getting capacity onto the site. But with that, you can electrify typically two spaces. Whereas with the same cost, more or less, for a dock chain system, you could electrify something in the order of 20 spaces. And that actually turns out to be a fairly common use case for, for a lot of the people that we're talking to about the system. One of the other benefits is instead of having a vulnerable charger in the middle with uh, screens and everything else onto it, what we can do is the, the, ex the expensive bit, which is that DC charging unit in the beginning, in the middle, can be in a stamped steel box and can be much more durable and can physically be, be, be out of the way. Um, and essentially how it works versus other solutions is if you, if you have a, a place and you want to charge lots of cars, you can put in a few you know, quick DC chargers they're expensive per space. And if you want to charge lots of cars, you're going to have moving cars on and off the, the chargers all the time. Or another common solution that's used is to put in lots of low power AC chargers. Then the situation is there's no, there's no, you can't charge any individual car quickly. Uh, and you've got that either or decision on speed and cost. And a lot of the time as well, if the charging stations are empty, you can't actually put power a lot of power into a car unless you've got lots of cars there and that turns out to be an issue for the price of electricity whereas with the dock chain solution kind of what you can do if i can get it to come up is i'm showing here again a high power charging unit two chains and you can charge any car on either chain at full speed and you can charge the cars in any sequence you want 
And this gives you a whole bunch of advantages um, in, a, in a lot of contexts, not every context, but in a lot of contexts. Uh, you get a higher a high average charging speed. You can charge any car in any order. If you want a particular car back on back on the street quickly, you can charge that one first. And you can set a whole bunch of priority rules. And one thing on the priority rules that's been very interesting to a lot of contexts is several people mentioned it already is 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 uh, things like you know office chargers where the guys get to the office first because they're not doing any childcare and they occupy the spaces or in public charging locations where you know women get intimidated because there's a shortage of charging spaces spaces and it's visible who's at the top of the queue with the dock chain system you can have lots of charging spaces and it's a virtual queue so so there's no way to intimidate anybody because you don't know who to who to try and, and and bully off the charger as it were and basically this is kind of the way it works is you have a you know a charger in the corner and you can just extend the system down along as many parking spaces as you need eventually of course depending on the context you start running out of average power because we can't multiply we, we can't create new electrons uh, but this is the way that the system works and it gives you a great combination of flexibility cost effectiveness speed you can charge lots of cars and one point that comes up in a lot of contexts is and i think somebody mentioned you know overstay charges essentially with this system you can't block the charger because there's lots of lots more spaces um, and it gives you an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of uh, advantages. And one of the ones for the future is the whole V to G possibility down here at the bottom is putting the the, the the battery charge of the cars back onto the grid in the future. When we've been talking to customers, um, we started we started with this sort of summertime last year. We've been going since then. We really reached out first to car rental operators. The co-founder in the UK had experience with Avis. And so for cities like London and Amsterdam, where they're putting in these zero emission zones already, car rental companies have a problem. You know, they, they, they have to have sites with all electric cars. We've spoken to companies in the delivery industry. So, you know, Royal Mail, some of the other big delivery companies, they're electrifying fleets of tens of thousands of vehicles. And that combination of, of high speed when you need it and low cost for all the spaces is very attractive to them. And it comes up in interesting areas. So we talk to a delivery fleet and they, they can ask the question, are you telling me we can recharge a car quickly in any space? So any loading bay, if a van comes back in and it's at a loading bay refilling with packages, it can be meaningfully charged in the 10 or 15 minutes that it's at that loading bay, to which the answer is yes. And it doesn't have to go to a specific location to charge, no. And they said, you may have just saved me tens of millions of pounds because now I can buy vehicles with a lower battery capacity. They don't have to last the whole day out on the street. So instead of buying 70 kilowatt hour batteries, I can buy 40 kilowatt hour batteries. And that saves me a lot of money on a lot of vehicles. And so that's a big deal to them. The other kind of places we've talked to are uh, hotel chains. I'm sure people have had the experience of turning up at a hotel chain and finding out that there's two slow chargers at the back and they're occupied. Um, we can completely transform that kind of uh, situation. We've talked to uh, office parks where at the moment, again, you know, there's a few spaces are electrified. There's a scramble for the spaces in the morning or they're given to senior managers or there's a, you know, an awful process where there's a queue and people have to go down during the day to move their cars off the off the charging. Um, and even apartment buildings in several countries, we've had really good conversations with landlords who can who can turn these into who can give really good uh, EV electrification possibilities in in apartment buildings. Uh, when we started off this first, I mean, the idea sounds so simple, you'd think somebody must have thought of this before. So we talked to a whole bunch of people to find out if anybody had, had got this before. And the answer at the time was, was, was no, which was good. Uh, we spoke to a whole bunch of companies asking them how they would or could use the, the service and, and, and the technology and really had people trying to buy it um, on the first phone call, which you know anybody who's been in B2B sales <laughs> knows that that does not happen. And it was happening to us. And now we've got a whole bunch of people really want to do pilots and trials as soon as we can possibly manage to, to get the equipment to them and, and to do those pilots. We've spoken to a bunch of governments as well. The UK government is very excited by this, the Department of Transport. We've only had uh, initial contacts with the Irish government. We've spoken to Dublin City. We've spoken to some major cities in the US who are fascinated. And, and we really want to get out to those guys as quickly as possible. And just again, in, in the way it would work, because we've been talking to businesses, because that was our background, that was that was where we started thinking about this first. The the motel unit kind of seemed to be very useful. It was a good size for 
car rental sites. You know, if you imagine a, a, an airport rental location, and it was very suitable for uh, motels in the U.S. or maybe a Formula in in France, something like that. And most of the customers we spoke to kind of went, "Yeah, we have a bigger balance sheet than you because you're a startup and we're 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 a big corporate, but our CFO wants us always to get things on a a rental or a leased basis." And so for most of the people we're talking to, they would pay for it on a you know example price there, three dollars a day per space or three euros a day per space. And they would keep that running for a three to five year contract. And essentially every everybody we're we're talking to is kind of saying, yeah, and you know, the contract would extend because EV charging standards are going to be the same now for, for 10 or 15 years. Um, we also from a scaling point of view want to get vendors involved who can you know, if there's somebody builds EV charging systems in Spain, they can license this, and um, and do it and do it that way. And you know, there's a lot of interest from a lot of companies around the world to to extend the system out. One of the other advantages is that if you look at installation in in tighter spaces, one of the things is these can be DC chargers, but they're as easy to install as as AC essentially, and that bigger, heavier DC unit can go in a fuse room on a roof outdoors and within limits quite a quite a distance away from the from the parking that you want to try and do where we are now in terms of the the business is this was done and built and tested in ac several years ago at, at ucd um, we're we've built a dc prototype at the lab in ucd in the last uh, couple of months we're building a field prototype now it's being built in the UK with uh, grant aid from the UK government. And we're talking to people to do pilots, you know, single location pilots in pro hopefully in Britain, because that's where we can get the stuff made easiest. And then to be able to take orders or to work with vendors at scale for 2023 and into 2024. So again, the problems that were mentioned about supply chain for chips, it's affecting us a little bit, but we're looking at very small volumes uh, through 2022 into the beginning of 2023, and we'll only have a supply chain problem after that. In terms of news, we've uh, won venture launch, so we're the UCD startup of the year 2021, which was nice. We won a grant from the UK to build field prototype. Because this isn't just software, it actually requires hardware as well. We've talked to a bunch of financing houses who can asset back the, the, the equipment. We've got tons of interest in North America, uh, we're trying to raise money now. This is all happening rather quickly, but we're trying to raise money now. And uh, we've come across recently public transport opportunities, electric buses, which was an area we had completely ignored because we thought buses were going to be such high power devices. They'd be looking at 350 kilowatt uh, systems. And, um, uh, and that was just going to be hard work. And when we're starting to get some some press interest around the world, it's been it's been interesting. Uh, we haven't actually managed to get really an interview done with the Sunday Business Post yet, but we've done interviews with a number of other media, and it sounds really good. And uh, that's what a public transport system would look like. Instead of multiple chargers for buses, you basically have a parking space per bus, and at any time you could park bus number one at say 120 kilowatts, and bus number two at 100 at sorry at 30 to fill up to your 150. And then you swap around, you do uh, what's called in the patent time domain multiplexing to charge essentially one bus on the chain at each time. And, and you can do it really quite effectively. Um, and yeah, for the US, we talked about, you know, people are making electric F-150s and even with one charger and a daisy chain of, of charging locations, charging one car on a chain at each time, we could charge 20 F-150s overnight. And then the hotel could use their spaces for daytime charging for fast charging during the day. We discovered just before Christmas that Rivian had put in a patent application that was essentially our concept. Uh, the U.S. patent examiner went back and told them that they couldn't have the patent because because we'd already got uh, we'd already got the, the the solution described. And um, we're raising money. We're trying to get partners around the world, and we think this is a big thing that can come out of come out of Ireland. Um, got a great team. And my interest in talking to you guys is very simple. You guys own electric cars. You'll have tons of ideas that we haven't thought of. And uh, you might be able to identify things we could do or issues we need to incorporate into the solution. And it's always good to talk to people who are EV enthusiasts and, uh, and get some feedback. So if there's no time now, just ping me later. And, um, and I'll try and answer any questions or get any ideas. And I see one question. Are we different from the chem power chargers? 
I'll have to defer to John. He's looked at the Kempar solution. Uh, yeah, it's different. That's about it. I don't think I've used my time, but I'll shut up anyway because I do tend to, to talk too much. <laughs>